100,000 shells poured into Verdun every hour. Wilhelm's intention being to kill the majority of the French defenders before the infantry even started their advance into the fortress. Following an optimistic assessment, a German scouting party was sent in following the initial bombardment. They reported that half the French fighting force remained to meet the planned attack. Arguably, had Wilhelm chosen to attack at this point, the fortress might still have fallen. Instead, daunted by the apparent formidable defences, Wilhelm chose to renew the bombardment. By the close of the first day, the German forces had succeeded only in capturing the French front line trenches, much less than planned. Situated on the east bank of the Meuse River, the fort had held out against constant bombardment since the start of the battle in February. However, by now out of reserves of water and the fort itself lying in ruins, its French defenders could hold out no longer. With the capture of the fort, Wilhelm offered his congratulations to the fort commander, Major Ranau, for holding out so long. Encouraged by the success in capturing Fort Beau, German troops almost succeeded in breaking through the French line at the close of June and into early July. It was at this stage that the latest form of chemical warfare was unveiled by Germany, phosgene gas, which acted by forming as hydrochloric acid once inhaled into the lungs. Joff, meanwhile, pressed the British government to stage a major diversionary offensive elsewhere on the Western Front in order to drain German manpower and so relieve the pressure at Verdun. Although British forces comprised by far the bulk of the offensive forces, Joff and Haig originally intended the attack to be a predominantly French offensive. However, the German onslaught at Verdun resulted in a diversion virtually all of French manpower and efforts. Haig took over responsibility from Joffre for the planning and execution of the attack. Haig's meticulous preparations progressed slowly, much to Joffre's irritation. Haig intended to fashion the attack using the ideas of both himself and General Rawlinson, whose fourth army was to spearhead the assault. 